today we will discuss about the ppr and some validations validations and properties okay. what is ppr ppr means partial page rendering partial page rendering we have act what is the ppr we'll see first we'll see suppose i think this is not the page this is someone has developed six okay who developed this page ashwant open Open, I'm opening our August project. This is our employee page. We have given in the create page, we have given for some fields required property true, correct? Whenever they are uh, trying to save the records without entering the employee name, so that time the validation is triggering. Suppose see here, this is the create page. Suppose if I'm trying to save, it is showing that form validation failure, a value must be entered for e name, correct? This is correct. At the time of save, this validation has to trigger. But see, one new employee joined in the organization. I came to this page to enter the details. While entering the details, I got one doubt. Okay, let me fill this uh, record later. Okay, so I'm trying to click the cancel button. See, this time also it is asking to enter the e name. It's not correct, correct? See, this validation has to trigger only at the time of save only, not at the time of cancel. Cancel means the existing transaction has to be rolled back and it has to go to the, the previous phrase from where we have navigated to this page. Yes or no, guys? Is it clear? See, this mandatory is whenever we are trying to commit the data in the database, that time this mandatory validation has to trigger. Cancel means we are canceling the transaction. That's it. For canceling, we no need to enter this all the information, correct? So how to handle that one? See, we have to go to cancel page. Where is our create page? See, here cancel button. Here in the cancel button, we have this uh, disable server side validation and client side validation. Just make these two properties as true. Okay. Just initially it is false. Just then make it to true. Now run the page and see. Now run and see, now that validation will not trigger. What is the property for that one? We have to disable the client side and server side. Both, one property is enough, but better to give both the properties as disable the validations on the both the pages. Okay. See, now I'm going to create. Now I'm trying to save. So it is asking for the name. So I'm canceling. See, for the canceling, it is not asking now. See, one more time. For save, it is asking. For cancel, it will not ask. What is the property we have to change at the cancel button? At the cancel button, we have to disable the, we have to disable the properties of server side validation and client side validation. Initially, it is that false. Now we have to make these two properties as true. Then only that validation will not trigger on the cancel button. Okay. This is the 
one concept. This is one validation. Now we are going to see PPR. What is PPR? Okay. Now, let's suppose this is my create page. Okay. Mm. Whenever user is entering some some information here in the employee name or salary, okay, based on that particular field and the particular field, I want to do some validations, okay. So how to do? Suppose we enter that. Suppose designation is manager, okay. Designation is manager. Uh, sorry, this is not the designation. Where is the Job job is manager. I want to do some validation. So whenever I enter the value here, manager, I want to display a message that for managers, commission is not applicable. Okay. Or else I want to make a, okay. First we'll display the error message. Whenever they enter the manager here, once they enter the job as manager. Immediately, I want to throw a message that per manager commission is not applicable. I want to put that validation. How to put that validation? See, whenever they enter the job here and tab out, immediately I want to trigger one validation. This you may already din, uh, done in the your D2K forms. Okay. Just try to come if you are familiar with the forms, just try to compare all the OF with the forms. Okay. Terminology is different, technology may be different, but the functionality wise is same. Okay. Suppose manager, I will tab out. See here, it's not triggering anything. Okay. But I want to trigger some validation here. And what field I have to trigger? Tell me on what field? Job field. Go to the create page. The Java. This is page. And what field I want to trigger the validation? Job field. Go to here. Here there is a action type is there action type you have to go to this action type see uh, if it is a image if you remember while we are discussing about the search update page and delete page whenever you given the action by default it will come as a fire action only see if you see here in the search page okay go to the search page if you see here in the update once i select the see for the submit image what is the action we have? We have only fire action or none. We have only two options for the image. But whereas if you see here in the create page for here job, this is message text input. For message text input, we have the action type. Along with the fire action, we have the fire partial action also. Just I'm selecting the fire partial action. Okay. See only this property only will change. Remaining all same. See whenever you change the fire partial action, by default event name will come as update. So you have to change this to one meaningful name. Suppose uh, this is designation validation. Okay. I'm keeping as designation validation. Okay. Now, now tell me, we have already discussed two, three times. Now I want to get this action in my controller. What code I have to write? What, see, if you want to get the parameter, you have to use the page contest dot bed parameter. But this is the event. How to get the event? Is anyone remember we return at the time of update and deletion time? People not remember, huh? Okay. If page context that if it is a parameter, we have to use the get parameter. Here in the double quotation, you have to give that ID. See how I, I did for the save and cancel. Okay. But this is the event, you have to use the event param. Event param dot equals. See, you can use the equals or ignore case. If you use the equal case, you have, that event name is a case sense to. If you use the e equal ignore case, you can give this D and this V also small letters also, then it will also it will work fine. Okay. If you use the equal ignore case, okay, it will ignore the case sense to. Now here. Whenever this event is triggered, I want to get this 
job field okay see how how we got the employee number employee name similar string is job equal to page contest dot get parameter we got this one see similar this is not any new i'm writing okay this is we already discussed multiple times okay only thing we today we change this property instead of in the update and deletion we have you used the fire action now instead of fire action we are using the fire partial action that's it remaining code logic is same now we got this one how we compare the username and password tell me how we compare username and password if username dot equals signal case to password correct here yes job if if s job control space s job dot equals ignore case manager if it is manager i want to display a message how will display message tell me throw new voa exception commission not applicable for managers okay oa exception that this is you are giving the information this is not the confirmation and this is not the error this is the designation uh, this is the just information we are passing now i will now i'm running the page see i'm running the page now once you enter the designation as if you enter the designation as a manager now the validation will trigger job i am entering manager it is asking to enter the first it is asking to enter the e name okay i am giving e name as test123 and job as manager see this one once i enter the designation as a manager it is entering commission not applicable for managers suppose uh, this is i'm changing to clerk that error message is gone for clerk it is not throwing see this commission okay suppose whereas i'm entering manager see it is throwing that validation So I enter developer. See that is not triggering. Is this clear or any doubt? Is this clear or any doubt? Okay, sir. Now I will tell you one draw one issue here. Suppose this is I'm entering manager. Tab out. It is throwing the message. Managers commission not applicable for manager. Even though it is throwing the message, I enter this thing. If I save, record will save. Correct? Yes or no? Even though it is throwing the message, just it is throwing the message, but it is not. Restricting this field, okay. So, given that is drawing the message by mistake or wantedly, if they enter the commission, it will accept. It will commit the data. So here, I want to hide this, uh, make this field as a read only whenever the job is manager. So here, if I enter the designation as a manager, okay. Once I tap out, this field should be read only. If I enter this to any other. I want to make this field as editable. Then they can enter the commission, whatever they want, and they can do the, or uh, they can do the transaction and commit. Okay. For that, see, this is a PPR we have discussed. It. How to throw the messages using the PPR? Okay.
messages we have seen but if you have seen some uh, uh this may even though we are displaying that message this validation is not the uh, this field is editable only so they by mistake they can enter the field now how to make the fields read only okay read only and editable conditionally how to make that okay for that one we have already seen the a spell by pa for to pass the parameters. What is the spell syntax here? We already discussed at the time of update and delete. This is the spell syntax, correct? Just copy this entire syntax. This is the spell for to pass the parameters. The spell is not only for to pass the parameters. We can use as a conditionally to make the fields rend uh, read only rendered true or false also we can use this okay see here cancel this one go to update page see this commission field is there this commission for this commission field here read only is there read only is false okay if you make this true what will happen tell me in all the cases it will read only either manager or, or developer Okay, well, whatever the designation we enter, this is only if condition only. It's a straightforward. There is no if. Correct? It will work straightforward, either false or true. You can make read only, uh, so editable or non-editable. This is a straightforward. If you use any one of these two properties, false or true. Instead of these two properties, I want to add one more property to make this field conditionally read only. So for that one, we have to use the spell okay how to use the spell now what is the evo for this one tell me for this one what is the evo evo this emp evo vivo we have to go to that evo vivo see all these are attributes correct all these attributes are coming from where tell me let's try to answer the questions at least then you can understand something EMP table from EMP table. These are all database table. Now I want one more attribute that is called a transient attribute. That attribute is not belongs to this EMP table, but we can create a, our own attributes on the particular EVO or VIVO. We can use for our validations. Okay, how to create that? See. Double click on that one. We have the attribute section here. Now we have the new. See, new. Click here. Uh, view any name. Is. I'm giving is read only. Okay. I'm giving is read only. Just copy that name here anywhere. Because it's a case sense too, so better to copy and uh, place it in somewhere notepad. After you create this read only, here you can select either type as a string or boolean or timestamp, whatever based on your requirement you can. Okay, now I'm taking this one as a boolean. Okay, and always you have to keep this as always. This property updatable, you have to keep it as always. Otherwise, suppose now it is true. Later, if it is changed to false, it will not update. Always, the whatever the first value will claim. That is only going to be stored here in the read only field. So to overcome that or to fix that one, you have to check the update as always. So whatever new value will come, that value is going to be stored here. Okay. I'm doing this read only. Now again, I'm going to create one more time how to create the transient attributes. What is the in interviews they may ask you what is the transient attributes and when we'll use transient attributes are the attributes not coming from the any database tables we will create those attributes to do some validations before data is coming committing in the database okay double click on that evo vivo go to attributes click on new is read only go and change this to boolean select passive sorry pa if you select the passive or not or not select also no issue but this is the mandatory always and select the style whatever you want string or car or byte whatever it may be right now i'm taking the boolean click on ok 
apply okay now again go and see the sibo vivo the atom it is showing is read only what that this is it showing here it is see all the values it is showing it is coming from the emp emp evo it is taking the reference but whereas if you see here this read only it is showing only transient it is a transient address means this value has not came from the database okay now your attribute is ready now go to your attribute is ready now we have to set yes or no to read only true or false on that one okay if it is manager if it is manager okay i don't want this error message right now okay first where that attribute is available the transient attribute tell me where the transient attribute is available tell me guys on this evo vivo correct get that evo vivo here okay where is that evo vivo this is your vivo vivo where is this okay let me get this one whenever they click on this one whenever it is validating now i'm getting this evo vivo ro rw equal to vivo dot you have to get this current row correct on the particular row you want to get okay vivo dot sorry get current row you will get the present row on whatever row you have clicked and you came to this one okay now rw dot set attribute here you have set the see if you see here create page you have set set attribute we already used it's not new for us this is we already discussed in the creation type rw dot set attribute employee number from sequence rw dot set attribute from the uh how to set the current db date okay now here you have to set set attribute what is the attribute name here sorry transient attribute name is is read only boolean dot read only yes it has to be read only okay if it is manager else it's not manager okay it's not manager copy paste this one instead of read only true you have to use this is read only false that's it now take this attribute and prepare the spell okay this one attribute where is your vivo this is your vivo enter here now copy this this property this is the property spell is a property this property you have to give that on the particular designation field see sorry commission field now in the read only give that property now whenever now see it whenever this validation designation validation is fired it will get the job and it will get the current row in the current row if the designation is manager okay then it will set this property as read only true or else it will set the property as false how it will work we'll see till the page open you have any doubts you can ask us I'm going to the create page option. I'm entering the employee name is the test. I'm entering the C. Now it is editable, correct? Now I'm entering the designation as manager. See, commission field is read only, correct? You observe, have you observed this one, guys? See, now I'm going to change this as a developer. See, it is editable. Lot of validations we will do using the PPR only. PPR and CLC. Guys, is it clear? Have you seen this one? Whenever I entering the manager, commission field is read only. We cannot enter that thing. 
okay if i enter as a developer anything other than manager see commission is editable is it clear or any doubts yes it's clear now see this is developer i given the developer so it is editable now i am entering the commission now i am going to this job i am going to change this as a manager See, it is read only, but the value is there, correct? But our target is for commission, this commission should be null. You observe this trick. See, I'm giving this is developer. Okay, perfect. I will remove. Okay, first it is like this. Okay, now I'm entering the value 100. Now I'm going to here manager and I'm changing this value. It is read only, but value is there. Our intention is not, our target is not. But here Only to make this one, this commission should be null. You correct? So that means whenever they select the manager job, if the value is there in the commission, that value we have to remove and we have to make it as read only. Correct or not? Whenever they select the manager, we are changing this to read only. That's well and good. But what about if that if that contain value? Whenever user entering the information, we don't know whether he went or only first job then commission we don't know he may select first manager he may enter first department number he may enter first commission like that okay so how to avoid that thing okay that thing we have to see is this clear or any doubt okay you can multiple uh use right i didn't get you we can do multiple, I mean, uh, at a time, commission and uh, address. Yes, yes, we can do. For uh, everything, you have to create one page. That's it. Okay. You have to create one uh, different transient attributes you have to use. See, how to make this read only, okay? See, before we are setting up, we are setting here the property, correct? Is read only. Similarly, if it is a manager, rw dot rw dot set attribute, we have here commission field, correct? If the commission is there, that commission we have to make it as null. Set attribute commission. You have to set null. If it is a manager, always that commission field should be null. See now run the page and see. People in learning says always think how to write big big code. How I want to write thousand line code. I want to write five five hundred lines course. Okay. That you have first you have to understand these concepts. Okay. See, I'm going to create entering test here. Developer. I will give. Okay, now I will change this to manager. Now what it has to do, it has to delete the commission and make this field as read only. See, it is deleted that value. Correct. Now I'm entering to developer. It is editable. I will enter 2300. Okay, now I'm going to change manager. See, it is removed. Correct. How to do that? You have to make this property. Sorry, you have to set this attribute as commission is null. If it is a manager, first you have to set the commission field to null. Then you have to set the read only property. Is it clear or any doubt?
Mute us, guys. You can ask us. Sure. Yeah. How can we make that commission field as gray field, sir? Just now we did not. For that, we have created one transient attribute on the page, on the view. See. No, sir. My question is, uh, the column should be there, but uh, it can't be uneditable. Commission should be gray field. Gray field means I mean, it should be has borders like this, correct? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, for that one, only simple thing is just we did this. Uh, we given this property to where is this one? Read only, correct? Yes, sir. In instead of read only, copy this one, use the disable property. Yes. Instead of read only, we have to use the disable property. Now run the page. Now oh, I will enter uh, this name as test job name is sorry you can give any name other than developer this you are entering okay now I'm changing to see it is showing but it is not entering. If you click here, cursor is not allowing. If I click here, department number, cursor is allowing, manager. Correct? See, have you seen this cursor is coming here? But if I click on commission cursor, even though it is this one, but it is not, and it is disabled. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is the property you have to use. I Sorry? Sir, can we make that into color as gray? In we, when we color. go to infrared mode, the fields appear like that, no, sir. Which one you want this commission field as yes, color? Yes, sir. Gray field. Gray particular, color. particular field we cannot do. If you want, you can do the sections. Based on conditions, we cannot do. We can give them only few scenarios for that we have to know the css colors okay sir like that when we are going in per remote in uh, rag labs huh. that f11 control f11 that core remote yeah, is yes, not, not available here for this one that so that is not available okay, sir. but if you want you can give the entire color yes that is possible but that core remote those options are not available okay sir Any doubts? No doubts? Is it clear? PPR is clear to all of you? PPR and the spell 
and this uh, transient attributes is all clear to all of you. Okay, we'll proceed for the we'll proceed to the next concept. Okay, but you have to learn this uh, uh, PPR. Okay, this is a common. If you are developing any page, this is the common use. Okay, without this PPRs and these validations, you cannot uh, develop. You cannot finish a page. Okay, so this is the very very common requirements whenever you are doing the messages okay now see if you see if you observe here cancel click and go Okay. See, suppose first I'm entering in the job. Okay. See, before we commit the database, uh, this transaction to the database, we have to fill all the validations. Okay. User first may enter the designation, department number, and manager, whatever it may be. Suppose I'm entering here job like a developer first. See, it is asking first to enter the e-name. This is not required to validate here, correct? This validation has to trigger whenever I'm trying to save. See, mandatory means when it has to trigger before you entering the, suppose you are doing any online transactions, okay? You have to enter the OTP at the last, correct? You may enter the amount, whatever you want, you can enter that amount. Okay, here also, first I will I will enter here anything. I But this name validation is triggering here. See, you must enter a value for any name which is wrong, correct guys? See, this has to trigger only at the ename, okay? So how to fix this one, okay? Till now, for to make this property uh, required, we are given here. Where you are given this one? Here is a clear page, yes. In the employee name, we have selected this required property true. That's why it is triggering. Okay. So, but it is triggering when other validations is firing. Suppose PPR is firing, that time also this, this is triggering first. But this is wrong. This has to trigger only at the time of save only. So, for that one, this property is not held. So, we have to make this required. But if it is true, may, uh, if it is if you set this as a no, without entering the e-name, employee name only, the data will commit. But without having the employee name, we have to restrict them to commit the data into transaction. So how to do that? This is also very simple. See, whenever they are trying to save, try, see all the OF validations based on the rows attributes only. Okay. Get that particular row, current row. Okay. Whenever they are trying to save, at this level we will we'll set that. Okay. Get the current row. Now, if RW dot get attribute, get attribute. What is the attribute name? E name. Okay. Okay, if this is equal to null, okay, here you have to throw exception, throw new OA exception, employee name is mandatory, 
OA exception dot error. Now it will throw the error message. Okay. Now I'm running the page. Now I will enter here job. Now it will not trigger. See, see, it is not triggering that now that required condition. Correct. Now I'm trying to save. See, employee name is managed. Now it is throwing at the time of save only. So now they can enter any field information first. Is it clear? How to do that? Before save, you have to get that one. And if it is null, you have to check like this, get attribute and null. If it is null, we will throw this message. Is this clear or any doubts, guys? Small, small validations. Okay. But these things only we are going to use. If this is clear to you, we'll continue with the other info, other uh, concepts. If any doubts, you can ask. Why I'm asking today this one time is all these are like a coding. Okay. So if you have any doubts, you can ask. Okay, guys, I think you, you don't have any uh, doubts here. So we'll proceed for the next step. See, this is, we have displayed for this one, uh, only single messages, correct? So employee for employee number, we are displaying that, please enter the employee number. Suppose I have like this, uh, so many exceptions. Okay, suppose I have uh, employee number is, is, see, by seeing this page, tell me what are all the fields are minimum mandatory to enter the data. Only employee name? Manager name also. Manager is important and salary is important. Job is important. All these fields are mandatory, correct? So, all the exceptions I want to throw on a single time. Suppose, this exception is throwing. Now I will enter the employee name. Okay. Again, if I save, if I write like this, now if I write this, uh, suppose, um, okay. Mm. Add this two separately. Suppose, let's select salary. Okay. Salary also we need to check. Suppose these two is mandatory. Let's suppose, okay. 
salary is mandatory. Now I'm running. I don't know how many of you are doing the practice, but you have to do the practice and keep on telling you, okay? I'm trying to save. It is entering employee name is mandatory. So user will enter the employee name. He thought only this is only the mandatory. Now again, I'm trying to save. Again, it's showing salary is mandatory. He will enter the salary. If some After that, if you are the manager, manager also, it will throw manager. So he user will get confused. How many fields are mandatory here? Whenever if one validation is failing, then I'm trying to save. What are all the exceptions error messages are there i want to capture all the exceptions and i want to display only in single shot so okay i want to display all combine all the messages and throw it in a single time so that i can know that these are all the mandate information so that i can handle it is this valid question or not okay. For that, how to do is okay, guys. Try to practice up to here. Okay, uh, we'll take that uh, bundle exceptions on uh, tomorrow. I'm traveling to hometown, so no class Saturday and Sunday. Next, we'll connect on Monday. Okay, so the next concept we are going to discuss is. bundled exceptions okay it's for this one we have to first we have to import the array list in our controller on that array list we have to add one by one exceptions and you have to display those things bundled exceptions after the bundled exceptions we are going to see see suppose in development we have added this exception message what is that exception message suppose let's suppose where is this one Employee name is mandatory. We have added like this. So user is tested this one. It's working fine. Now we are deployed in the production. In the production, after one or two months, they thought that this is not the uh, mandatory. Uh, sorry, this is not the uh, meaningful information. Just we, I want to change this message. Uh, employee name is mandatory. This thing I want to change to the mandatory. I want to change like this before. Saving. I want to add this one in the production. Okay. If this requirement came once development is completed and we deployed in the production, but later after one or two months, okay, they came up with this one. So again, they have to come to you for this small change, exception change, and you have to change and you have to deploy and you have to do bounce. All those things are there. Correct. So to avoid how to avoid those things, this is small message change only. Correct. If it is small message change, even though it is a small change, but if you have you add that messages here, this is the hard coded messages. If you see here, correct? Yes or no? This this message is hard coding. We are giving a hard coding message here. So again, if, in future, if they want to change this one, it requires a lot of uh, changes and deployment, everything, correct? You will not give that much permi uh, frequent permissions to bounce the 
production servers okay so how to call the fnd messages here how to call the fnd messages that means we will create the messages uh, in the oracle and we will call those things to here okay how many of you you know that uh, how how to create the exceptions uh, sorry messages in the oracle application you people are know or don't know Oh, sir. How to create the messages? I will show you. You have to go to application developer. Now go to application developer, application, here we have messages. Suppose give xx, suppose em give like uh, give any meaningful them access employee name mandatory application yes application object library you can select any application suppose it is purchasing related you select the purchasing application if it is gl you can have to select like that okay here you have to select uh, please select suppose i will give like this name before saving i give like this okay have to save this one. It is saved. Now, this thing you have to copy in the exception. Okay. Now, instead of your hard coding messages, you have to call this one. If you give like this, in future, whenever changes have come, came in the messages, uh, you have to change it here only. So, automatically, it will call, okay? How to call that, okay? Suppose I will show that thing also, guys. Anyhow, we started now. So we'll try to finish that thing also. Anyhow, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, no class now, so that you can practice these things. See, how you are throwing exception messages here? Like this, correct? Now, I'm commenting this one. Now try to throw new OA exception. Okay. Here you created this message. Where you created an application, application object library is, suppose, Select star from 
I think you people already know these tables. FND applications. See, here it will application underscore VL, I think so. See here. It is showing the application name in this one, okay? Application name like, uh, what name we are given here? Application object library, correct? For application object library, we are given here, correct? What is the short name for that one? Here it's showing FND, correct? Yeah. Here it's showing the FND, correct? Guys, everybody can we please go on mute. You have to copy this FND, okay? Here you have to give that FND here, okay? If you create under PO, you have to give PO, if you didn't, okay? Now here, you have to give your message. What is the message name here? What is the message name here? Don't give this one, guys. Okay, you have to give this one. This one will refer this one, okay? You have to give that thing here. Okay? Here, give the null. I will tell you what is the null when I'm showing, when we are discussing about the bundle exceptions. That time I'm going to explain this concept. Okay. Why exception dot? This is error, correct? Error, comma, null. This, like this, you have to give. Now run and see. Okay. Run See, now go to create. See what it is showing. Please select EMP name before saving. From where it is getting this message? From where it is getting this? The text to. Now, this is user tested. And they give the approval and you deployed in the production. Now they, after one or two months, they came that, yes, instead of EMP, give the full name, employee. EMP means they will get confused, correct? Give the full name. Please select the employee name before saving. Okay. Now save. Now try to see it is showing till now EMP, correct? It is showing now EMP only. But see now where I change the logic here in the Oracle application. I have not touched anything here, correct? Cancel. Go. Okay, because it is in the same session, it is showing, but while you are doing in the application, once you deploy, it will reflect, okay? Now I'm running the page again. I'm running the page. I have not changed anything here. I changed only in the application, correct? Correct or not? I changed only here, only in the application, only instead of EMP, I have given the employee. Now see. What is this one? What is this two nulls? We'll discuss, guys. For now, just practice up to here only. These things we are going to. What is we have given two nulls, correct? What is this two nulls? We'll discuss. What is showing now here? What is showing now here? Employee name. Bye. Where we change this from EMP to employee? Definitely. So that's it. This is the how to call the messages. Actually, we have to call the exceptions like this only. We cannot call like.
directly hard coded messages okay this is the procedure how to call the messages is this any doubts here they may ask you how to call the exceptions uh, uh, sorry if fnd messages also if they ask you how to first they will ask you how to call the messages you will tell first you many people will tell like this we have to tell like this only we will give this like this okay then they may ask you this is the hard code messages suppose i want to give uh, i want to uh, avoid this dynamic uh, sorry this messages hard code message how to give then you have to tell you how to give, create the messages in the append applications then call that here then whenever a user wants to wants uh, they want to change the message in the production they will go to that message and they will change there automatically it will reflect here can i complete the bundle exceptions also today or we'll discuss on monday okay we practice here till here if any doubts let me know we will discuss on monday on how to do the bundle exceptions okay bundle exceptions and sorry guys we will discuss the advanced table and some other validations also now onwards most of the things next three four sessions only on coding only how to create the pages cello is those things you already completed and you do the practice any doubts you can come with Come up with your questions, but now onwards, all are in coding sections only. Okay, yes. If no doubts, we'll connect again on Monday. Okay. Bye, bye, everyone.